Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ólafur Ragnar Grímsson, Ministers, uh, Friends of uh, the Arctic Circle. It's a pleasure for uh, me to present uh, our company in the context of uh, Arctic uh, hubs. I once got a red card during my football career. Uh, I have never got a red card during my corporate career, and I will try to, it's not a nice feeling to get a red card, so I will try to refrain from that. So let's jump into that, a short disclaimer. Uh, Iceland Air Group at a glance, uh, we split our operation into two uh, different segments, uh, international flight operation, where we have Iceland Air, the scheduled airline, and Iceland Air Cargo, and then equity investments, uh, where we have aviation and uh, tourism. We have 49 aircraft in the operation, uh, 2,500 shareholders, uh, 4,200 employees. Uh, I will go uh, into the network in more details a little bit later, uh, but we anticipate to have 4.4 million passengers uh, this year. And uh, we have been around for eight years. Uh, we were established in 1937 in Akureyri. Uh, some people say, at least 19,000 people in Iceland say, all good things come from Akureyri, and probably five people in the room here. And uh, in terms of Iceland area, I, I can uh, confirm that. And uh, last but not least, we have been a profitable company, in, uh, and uh, not least in the, in the recent years. So let's go into the international flight operation. Uh, actually, the location of Iceland is uh, the key to our uh, strategy, and it's on the shortest flight route between North America and, uh, and Europe. And uh, this, uh, we operate on a 24-hour hub and spoke uh, network. Uh, we have 23 destinations in uh, North America and uh, 26 in, in Europe, and that counts for 678 uh, connection uh, options in total. And uh, our competitive advantage, as I said before, is Iceland, and not only the location, but also the Icelandic culture and uh, nature. And uh, we therefore strive to develop our service uh, with uh, authentic Icelandic travel uh, experience. The VIA market between Europe and North America uh, has uh, uh, shown the largest growth in, in recent uh, years. Uh, you can see the development there uh, from 2013 uh, up to this year. And we have uh, seen little less than 80% increase uh, from 13 to, to 17, and we are anticipating another 9% uh, in terms of ASK uh, this year. Only 12% of our business is uh, Icelandic people traveling out of Iceland. 36% uh, uh, tourists coming into Iceland, and then uh, the biggest bulk, 52%, is the via traffic, as I explained before, and 52% uh, and 30% of that 52% actually opt to stay in Iceland uh, when they travel between uh, the two uh, continents. Uh, and we have put a lot of focus on the stopover in, in recent years, and you can see there are 162% uh, increase between 2013 and, and uh, 2017. Uh, and this is a very simple uh, concept where you're able to, to stop in Iceland uh, up to seven nights uh, at no additional uh, airfare. And this is partly also a teaser for, for people to come to Iceland, the same as for the Faroes. If you come there for one day, you have to come back and, and see the rest. Uh, and in recent years, the, the network uh, from uh, 8.3 uh, to uh, 6.18, uh, 6.8, sorry, in, uh, in forecasted for 2018. So that is uh, double in this uh, short period of time. And we do that both through, through breadth and depth, as we call it. Uh, breadth is the, the number of gateways and destinations, and the depth is increased frequency. And there you can see the split to the right, 35%. Uh, increased frequency uh, in, in North America, new destinations in North America, 37%, 21% increased frequency in Europe, and then 7% new destinations in Europe, the total of 102%. Uh, and we have grown uh, considerably more on the uh, transatlantic than uh, the, the total market, and even though our growth is slowing down in, in 2018, forecasted for this year, uh, it is double the, the, uh, the total growth on the, on the transatlantic. This uh, might come as a surprise to some people. Uh, we believe connectivity is key to everything, and uh, not only in terms of uh, passengers, but also in terms of, of export. And there you can see the number of uh, trips per week next summer uh, between uh, the Scandinavian capitals uh, to North America, where our international airport in Iceland as a 241 uh, weekly 
uh, trips, which is way more than, than the other capital cities in Scandinavia uh, combined. And with a catchment area of, of uh, 200,000 versus 1.4 to uh, 2.1 million in the, in the other uh, cities. Uh, numbers of visitors uh, visiting Iceland, I hope you're going to sit here. Uh, the director of uh, Icelandic Tourism Association is going to have a presentation here uh, later this af afternoon. I will go into this in more details later. Uh, but we have seen a dramatic growth uh, in recent years, 240% uh, between 2012 and 2017 and another uh, at least 10% increase uh, for this year. Uh, but our biggest focus, as you will see from our vision of Iceland Air Group, is to increase uh, the connectivity and, and also to increase the number of tourists coming into Iceland in the winter uh, season. And you can see that there that uh, in the winter season we are seeing between three and 400% increase and uh, a lot less in the, uh, during the summer. Iceland Air Cargo is uh, now uh, part of our uh, Iceland Air uh, operation. And what I would like to point out here is that uh, uh, how bigger focus we have now with the improved uh, network uh, that we have had 16% or Iceland Air Cargo had 16% in 2008 that we were carrying in our uh, passenger aircraft, but it's up to 57% uh, in 2017. And it's worth noting that the carbon footprint uh, when you are uh, exporting in, in uh, passenger flight is way less than, than in, in, uh, in cargo uh, aircraft. And we also have examples that uh, by doing it with uh, passenger aircraft uh, to the continent of Europe, for instance, and not to mention uh, one of the Scandinavian countries, if you track that from, from uh, that particular country to the same destination in Europe, it's uh, actually uh, less carbon footprint to do it by air uh, from Iceland. So I hope I was able to explain the vision of Iceland Air Group, uh, which is to unlock Iceland's potential as a year-round destination and to strengthen Iceland's position as a connecting hub and to maintain our focus on flexibility and uh, experience. Uh, due to time constraint, uh, I will very quickly go through the equity investments. Of course, Air Iceland Connect uh, is uh, part of that uh, segment where we operate five uh, aircraft. Uh, Loftly Air Icelandic, I have been quite a, a lot involved in this operation recently. Uh, where we are both in uh, wet lease and, and uh, dry lease. Uh, Iceland Travel, uh, Iceland Air also, uh, Iceland Air Group has been focusing a lot on, on uh, investing in the infrastructure in Iceland. And uh, we are part of Icelandic Tourism Fund, where we are investing in companies that are uh, only focusing on uh, uh, activity-related uh, tourism in, in the country. And also, of course, through our Iceland Air Hotels, uh, where we are investing in uh, accommodation in, uh, in Iceland. Future outlook, uh, we have already uh, taken delivery, oh, I've already got the red card, sorry. Uh, we got the delivery of three uh, 737 MAX, uh, and you can see, and we have uh, 16 firm orders. We have done already sale lease back on four of the aircraft, and Jolco Financing is in, uh, in the work for, for two of the aircraft. Uh, and, uh, of course, uh, those uh, aircraft are are uh, economically, uh, both economically and environmentally friendly than the ones that we are operating today. And this will also give us a possibility to uh, have a better flexibility in our, in our operation and of course the 767 is going to uh, give us the opportunity to go into new markets like Asia. And for the growth plan for this year, 6% uh, in terms of trips and 10% in terms of uh, ASK. And uh, it may be worth mentioning here that uh, our first flight to Dublin was yesterday, and uh, this year we are also introducing San Francisco, Dallas, Kansas, Cleveland, and Baltimore into our uh, network. So, in conclusion, strong financial position, leaner and simplified organizational structure, and growth opportunities within and beyond our current network enables Iceland Air Group to generate long-term profitable growth. And uh, I hope we will have some time for the panel later for questions. See, I'm thinking we won't have time for okay. a panel, so I'm just going to slip a quick question to you here. Yes. I'm sitting here, I mean, it's quite overwhelming actually seeing the prodigious growth of Iceland Air. Um, and so uh, it takes quite something to try and find a little cloud in the horizon here, but it's my job. <laughs> and it just makes me wonder, is Iceland now sort of dangerously dependent actually on the success of tourism and of Iceland Air? Scotland all, often has this uh, lobbed at us that our economy is very uh, dependent on oil, and it goes up and down with oil. 
Is the same thing true of Iceland now, that it's totally dependent on the success of your company? I would put it the other way around, that uh, now we have tourism as one of the three uh, pillars of the economy. Like. I would put it the other way around, that now we have uh, tourism as part of the three main pillars of, of the economy in Iceland. So I see this more as, a, as, a, as an opportunity and support of the economy than, than the other way around. So this is a stable, stable chair with three prongs now, the other being what, geothermal energy? Yeah. And fishing, or energy and fishing. Okay, so there's, I can't, I can't wrong foot you. No. Uh, no, you, <laughs> you. You cannot, you can try. Okay, and you were a footballer, so uh, that's natural. <laughs> so I can tackle thank you. you. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you very much.